Hello friends. <clears throat> wow, we have a lot to get through today. Let me just organize myself here. I've started this presentation where it's a, really a prophecy update because, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a couple of things I'm going to share with you, a couple. I'm not going to bombard you today with a lot of news articles, but there's a couple of things that I think we should talk about at least share with you i'll come back to you nebi i call him nebi but of course that's not nebuchadnezzar this image here is taken from the book of daniel the prophet daniel chapter 2 the king at the time king of babylon nebuchadnezzar had a vision had a dream and in this dream in this vision he sees a statue and it's made of different metallic components and we're going to come to that in a moment let me just move along swiftly with some of the news updates that i've got with you because as i was preparing this message today i began honing in on the regional um the regional implications of where the beast of the end times is going to form so I think it's very important that we go back and look at certain scriptures. So we're going to take a trip down the book of Ezekiel, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. And we're going to look a lot at the maps. I'm going to try my best not to make this video a very long one, but we shall see how we do. So as you know, as I mentioned previously, previously in other prophecy messages that the US under the Biden administration as a priority, Middle East priority, they want to have Saudi Arabia and Israel normalize their relations while he's in office, Biden. So that's currently the hot topic in terms of the US relations and the Middle East, in particular with Israel and Saudi Arabia. Keep an eye on it, let's see what happens, but things are definitely moving along in that direction of full normalization. The Saudis have appointed their first ambassador to Palestine. So that's an interesting development there. The reason why this would happen is that they're approaching that time, friends, when they will make this peace deal, the Saudi Arabian and the Israeli are going to be friends in the open public arena. So I've been keeping an eye out on this. I've said this for a couple of years. I'm expecting this to happen. A part of the Abraham Accord. It could be a part of that. I'm, I'm believing it will be a part of that. Saudi Arabia will be the main player in this initiative. The Ara Arabian Accords. Abrahamic Accords. Another developing story. You can go directly to this website, theintercept.com. I believe they've got their own YouTube channel. I was right. Again, I remember telling you about this situation when it was in the heat of the moment between the US demanding other world leaders come out in the open and condemn Russia. There were some nations, a lot of nations, in fact. You know, the majority of nations did not align with this narrative that Russia needs to be condemned. We think in our Western mindset is that the, the, the whole world is against Russia. No, 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 no. Pakistan's leader at the time, Imran Khan, was one of those leaders who didn't like being bullied. Now, as much as I disagree a lot with Pakistan and its leaders, all of them, because their policies are always um harsh against the minorities in pakistan the christian persecution in that country is horrendous nothing's changed it's still as bad as it was a decade ago and several decades nothing has changed the fate of the christians in pakistan is always terrible so but having said that in terms of looking at the world and how these government leaders manipulate, bully 
and orchestrate certain events in the world today, causing wars, I believe he was right to stand up against the bullies in the US as a matter of principle. So, it's now leaked. Secret Pakistan cable documents US pressure to remove Imran Khan. You see, I mean, I'm sorry, but if you think for one minute, friends, that our leaders, our leaders in the West, are always doing the right thing, making the right decision, standing up for democracy, sp spreading peace and stability in the world, what planet are you living on? <clears throat> the safe place to be is to trust nobody, only trust the Lord. I don't want to go down that road. I've spoken a lot about this in my playlist, Russia and Ukraine. It's a very important playlist. It's very geopolitical. However, it's very important. I said some things in that playlist that have proven me right today. However, I'm not bragging about that. It's just to show you we need to be very careful with the news sources that we read and consume and what we are being told by the mainstream media. You cannot trust them, friends. You cannot trust them. Not one inch. Secret Pakistan cable documents use pressure to remove Imran Khan. So is that in the open? Because they wanted to slap him on the wrist. There was repercussions to Imran Khan's speech. And I'll show you in a video clip that speech that he gave that really irked the US administration at the time of this speech. <clears throat> Apparently, the US State Department encouraged the Pakistani government last March meeting to remove remove Imran Khan as the Prime Minister over his neutrality on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And Imran Khan's um, problem with that was, why are they demanding this neutrality a statement from Pakistan and why did they not pressure India. India, Pakistan are rivals, yes? India is a superpower. There, there's an animosity between these two countries, Pakistan and India. So he says this in the statement. I'm coming to that clip. I'll show it to you. So the Intercept have obtained it. Not only the Intercept. Is that on MN, MSNBC? The U.S. reportedly meddled with Pakistan's democracy over Russia. And not only Pakistan, they've done it many times, friends. This is what I'm saying. We think in our, in our mind that our administrations, including Britain, are all legit. That they know what they're doing. We can trust our governments. No, we can't. We need to wake up and stop being so naive. The meeting between the Pakistani ambassador to the U.S. and Two State Department officials has been the subject of intense scrutiny, controversy and speculation in Pakistan over the past year and a half as supporters of Khan, and I think a lot of his support, the momentum that he's gained, has come from this situation. Because, as you know, there's a worldwide growing anti-American sentiment, anti-US, anti-Western sentiment. Like, wait a minute, why is it that these nations have always caused problems and yet the world, because it's a poorer part of our world, seem to just put up with it. Anyway. Supporters of Khan and his military and civilian opponents jockeyed for power. This is all preparing a climate in our world today, in the Middle East, North Africa, Central Asia, friends, that are going to unite you see how everything has repercussions? They're going to unite because they're all fed up and they're done with Western hegemony in their regions, in their countries. They want to reclaim sovereignty. So this is all headed in this direction. So we prepare for it. We have anticipation, according to the scriptures, that the Lord God is showing us like his holy hand and his finger is pointing on the map to a location and how does this location this whole region in our world become center stage well we're seeing it now 
we're seeing how this is going to happen. This is why this is important that I share these news clips with you. So when I'm talking about Bible prophecy and I'm sharing with you, I believe it's going to arise. The beast is going to arise from this region. I'm showing you the evidence. I'm showing you how it's going to happen. Right. The political struggle escalated on August the 5th and Khan was sentenced to three years in prison on corruption charges ever since this time. Ever since this time, right? They've been ramping up the pressure to get this guy locked up, charged, or just, just wipe him off. Get him out of the way. Because he's a problem. The similarities between Imran Khan and Trump, I've seen them, I've seen the similarities, there's obviously stark differences, but there are very clear similarities. The people want him. He's got the, the popularity vote, right? People's popularity thing, the personality thing. Khan's defenders dismiss the charges as baseless. The sentence also blocks Khan, Pakistan's most popular politician, from contesting elections expected in Pakistan later this year. Same thing reported here. Joe Biden has framed his support for Ukraine against Russia's invasion as part of his worldwide commitment to defending countries' rights to sovereignty. But a report from The Intercept suggests that the Biden admin was willing to meddle in Pakistan's democratic process in its efforts to rally a global co coalition to isolate Russia. And this is all going to backfire. Backfire just terribly. And we're going to be seeing how this is really going to leave a really bad stain on US policy, British government policy who now the country is suffering economically because of their support. Unrestrained support for Ukraine. Ridiculous, nonsensical. So, let me show you the speech. Where is it? So, this is the speech. Four minutes. I think it's worth listening. From the horse's mouth. I like to go to the source. I don't want to just read stuff and base my conclusions on what I read I want to hear it if possible if it's recorded there's evidence so this is what Imran Khan said at the time and this is from Hindustan Times a very popular Indian news publication news outlet the title did you write to India Imran Khan slams West for asking Pakistan to condemn Russia over Ukraine and he's paying the price for it today just goes to show isn't it friends how Western leaders have these strings and they've got their puppets in the in the other parts of the world they back one particular leader who they favor who they can manipulate easily with money with power with prestige and whatever and if any other of these potential leaders step out of line there's a price to pay <laughs> You'll have to read the subtitles. He's saying, who do you think we are? What do you think of us? Do you think we are your slaves? That whatever you say, we will do. Who do you think he's talking to? He's directing this speech to those who were bullying him, trying to coerce him to change his stance on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The ramifications of this war have been global and leaders especially in africa have also been coerced to stand with the west to align their political stance against russia and join the west in condemnation and a lot of them have said no thank you we do not want war with russia we'd rather work and find a political solution diplomatic solution to this anyway let me play you'll have to read the subtitles for my english speakers but for those of us who understand Urdu, it's very plain what he's saying.
Ambassadors wrote a letter to us asking us to condemn and vote against Russia. He refused, and then that's when he started getting a lot of trouble. European Union ke ambassadors ne khat likha Pakistan ko ki aap Rus ke khilaf uske mukhalif statement de, uske khilaf vote de. मैं ये यूरोपियन यूनियन के एम्बेसडर से पूछता हूं कि क्या आपने हिंदुस्तान को भी ये खत लिखा था talked about that Pakistan as a country has suffered because he has supported the Western NATO alliance in Afghanistan. And remember, after the 9-11 fiasco, Musharraf, the general, was the leader. It was a military dictatorship in Pakistan at the time. And they treated him really badly, even though he did whatever he could within his means to deal with the terrorism. And is definitely a problem in Pakistan. There is no debate absolutely nobody can debate that it's definitely a problem but the problem hasn't gone has it it's just got worse ke ye wo pakistan tha jisne ye nato ki madad ki jo war on terror thi humne unka saath diya main kabhi na saath deta main apni mulk ko bahar rakhta us jang se lekin उस वक्त का जो सरबरा था उनको साथ दिया क्या मिला पाकिस्तान को अस्सी हजार पाकिस्तान अस्सी हजार पाकिस्तानियों की जाने गई हमारा कबाली इलाका उजड़ गया पैंतीस लाख लोगों ने नकल मकानी की हमारे मुल्क को सौ अरब डॉलर से ज्यादा नुकसान हुआ तो क्या मैं अपने यूरोपियन यूनियन के एम्बेसडर से पूछता हूं कि आपने क्या हमारा शुक्रिया अदा किया क्या आपने कहा कि हां आपने हमारी मदद की थी हमारी जंग में आपने हमें अप्रिशिएट किया सारे नेटो के मिला के दस फीसद भी लोग नहीं थे जो इस जंग में मरे हमारे मुकाबले में जो अस्सी हजार पाकिस्तानियों की कुर्बानी दी गई तो मैं उनसे आज ये पूछता हूं कि बजाय आपने जब हमने आपके साथ खड़े हुए थे बजाय आप हमारा कम से कम शुक्रिया अदा करते ऐसे आप में से लोग थे जिन्होंने अफगानिस्तान में जो जंग हारी आपने वो पाकिस्तान को जिम्मेदार चढ़ाया था with Russia we are also friends with America we are friends with China and with Europe fair point we are not in any camp Pakistan would remain neutral and work with those trying to end the war in Ukraine
very oh, just a so predictable friends i'm going to close down that window you see friends this is what happens when leaders in the world who align themselves with the western leaders those who have obviously the main plays are nato the eu the us great britain france whatever if they step out of line these puppets are cut off the strings are cut off we're, we're, we're crazy to think that democracy is a real thing in the world there's no such thing friends <laughs> once these leaders in the poorer nations declare they have a leader who will bring democracy there's always a fine line that they have to walk come on let's be honest i like to be very critical about everything friends i'm not spoon fed and i don't want you to be either now moving on to syria and turkey only time this these two nations come up in news i'm, I'm interested to know why syria is at the center of the beast empire right at the heart of it ancient assyria so let's see this guy they just cannot remove and i've said this before syria as a country as a nation as a peoples and this guy the moment he's removed or the moment this is really thrown into chaos it's already descending into chaos because this country is a linchpin of some stability in that region if syria goes down is headed there but they can't remove him we're going to be very close at the formation of the beast is this nation friends that the antichrist wants and needs to take control over Erdogan Assad and the west all seem to be accepting a low level grey zone conflict in Syria this is from almonitor.com it's a very good publication news outlet definitely recommend it for accurate news reporting Assad rules out Turkey normalization for now Bashar al-Assad is in no rush to bury the hatchet with his Turkish counterpart he has to get him to agree to work together because he his eyes are on Syria north Syria he he's is invaded it he wants to reclaim it as part of Turkish territory but how can he do that with Bashar al-Assad refusing to come to the table they've got to work to some sort of agreement so it's very complicated my goodness the whole area is a hot mess in an interview with sky news last week assad dismissed a meeting with erdogan said it would legitimize turkey's occupation of north syria exactly what do you want the man to do you want him to agree with turkey's invasion and come to some sort of agreement without him pulling out all his troops because he turkey is too involved now in syria there's no going back now so assad is in a very difficult position does he want war with turkey leading to a war with the us because turkey is the us man in the region now they've appointed him friends i don't trust our governments they're preparing the right circumstances for the rise of the islamic caliphate however and whatever it looks like we know what the bible is telling us anyway i'll read a little bit of this then we'll move on to what i want to say while reconciliation with turkey would be the most consequential of syria's normalizations assad may have his reasons for maintaining an uneasy state of neither peace or war a gray zone style stalemate in northern syria at least for now Although Erdogan has said he is in principle willing to meet Assad, is the one holding back. What do you expect him to do? Bend over and say, yeah, sure, cut up my land, you take that portion, and I'll deal with the unrest in where I'm at, where I have dominion. Among Erdogan's priorities, what's he going to do with those millions of refugees? 
These millions of refugees, friends, are going to pose a big problem in the future. I believe they're going to be part of the army. Those who will be willing to give their allegiance to the beast. We forget the fine details of scripture. There will be an army given over to the beast. I mean, we're talking about lots of people that are willing to say, we will fight for you, we will die for you, we will kill for you. Where's Satan going to get millions of people to do that? They're already present. They're just disunited, fragmented. There's a lot of disunity, but there's one man coming, the man of sin, who's going to unite them. They will need a leader to follow, right? Among other ones, priorities in negotiation Syria is the return of, look how many there are, 3.6 million Syrian refugees. Either that or either some of them go to Europe, which he's threatened Europe with. Erdogan has threatened the EU that he will flood Europe with these immigrants. Funnily enough, the scripture talks about the dragon sending a flood after the woman and her offspring. The flood of humanity. While Assad claims to seek the return of all 5.8 million Syrian refugees living in neighbouring countries, can you imagine the humanitarian disaster this is again western policies friends <clears throat> meddling the other thing is if we left them to it it would be worse either way this place is a hotbed of evil his preference may be to reduce the numbers over a long time time span serious government institutions are a shambles Because I've got a lot I want to share in terms of the scriptures, I, I need to move on. Going back to this, why am I even sharing that news with you? In the book of Daniel, a very old ancient book of the Bible, it was recorded that this vision that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon at the time, had a vision and the Lord God gave him this vision that he would know there's coming a time where there will be a superior kingdom that will trump his and not only that the following empires that would come would all together one day encompass a one coalition of a mighty beast but at the time of the final phase of the formation just before the return of the Lord Jesus how is this image to stand unless it has feet to stand so when the beast is on its feet friends that's the time of the tribulation in the book of Daniel, let us go there. We've got several chapters to go through. I'm in Daniel chapter 2. I'm going to scroll us down to the point where Daniel gives the interpretation. I've spoken about this in at length, in detail, many times. But it's been a while, I admit, since we've gone over these verses. So let's talk about it. <clears throat> Daniel has been given the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding by the God of heaven to interpret. So we receive his interpretation and we thank the Lord for this revelation. This is a dream. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You are king, are king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. Daniel, in this language, remember he was not speaking English at the time. We are reading the Bible in the New King James Version in the English. So we understand what was written in our common understanding, in our common language. What he's saying here, 
is a very common way of expressing the magnitude or the greatness of the empire. It's so big, it's the biggest empire the world has ever seen. It has dominion over all the creatures of the heavens, the birds, the beasts of the field, wherever the children of men dwell. But I think we need to look at the map, don't you? This was the Babylonian Empire. It did not take over the whole world, wherever the children of men dwelt. But the emphasis on, this, on that portion of the scripture is how great the kingdom is at the time. Everything is relevant to the time it was written, to the time it was spoken, to the time it was revealed, and to the person. It's figuratively speaking. So when the beast of the end times arises, the Bible refers to it that the whole world will marvel and follow the beast. It's not the entire planet, friends, not the whole, the whole world is going to follow the beast. But this is the same language expressing to us the magnitude, the greatness, the reach that this empire will have over peoples, cultures, languages, landmass. Okay. So he's saying this empire is so great, but, and you are the head of gold. He's that person, that portion. Can you imagine that was the Babylon Empire at that time and we had all this to go through yet. And there would be coming a time where one entity, one spiritual entity would come and tick all these boxes cohesively and form an amalgamum is that the right word a confederation of a united empire encompassing Babylon Medo-Persia Greek empires and only Islam does that only after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours and he speaks of the consecutive kingdoms that will come then another a third kingdom of bronze which shall rule over all the earth again rule over all the earth does not mean the entire world the planet or the plane the globe or the flat earth whichever opinion you are of it doesn't matter it's irrelevant and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything and like iron that crushes that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others you see this different kingdom is so different to the others he goes into detail what this be this beastly fourth kingdom does Whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's claim, partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. This is the interpretation, and the people said, Amen. This is not human mingled with alien hybrid, fallen angels kind of confederation. No. We read so much into the scripture, it confuses everybody. It's a divided kingdom. It's simply a united people's but ironically, there are divided peoples. And it's on this division of peoples that the image is going to stand on its feet. The irony is crazy. It's funny I use that word irony because it's made partly of iron. Whereas you saw the feet and toes partly of potter's clay, moldable, soft, where's the strength, where's the contrast? soft and strong the kingdom shall be divided yet the strength of the iron shall be in it i believe the iron is the islamic empire but the clay is the people groups mixed in the region humanity or arabized because if you go into the hebrew or the aramaic which i didn't bother doing at this time Please make sure you do that. It's the mixed mixture and the word for the mixture of the people 
or the mingling is Arabized. Arab is a mixed peoples. That's the interesting coincidence, not, about this whole prophetic scripture. There's a mixture, there's a division, there's clay, there's iron, there's an Arabization of this empire. The kingdom shall be divided, yet the strength of the iron shall be in it. And just as you saw, the iron mixed with ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron, partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong, partly fragile. Do we understand what the interpretation means? It's not fallen angels mixing with the seed of men. It's not some sort of hybrid Nephilim fallen beings coming no it's simply saying it's a political empire the peoples are not completely united at the table but for some reason nudge nudge wink wink they do unite and the unity that brings them together will be jerusalem israel and what to do about jesus in the book of Revelation, does it not say that the beast, the ten horns, declare war against the lamb? That's their end goal, is to fight against the king of kings. But, if we read on, this marvellous summary. As you saw, iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another. Just as iron does not mix with clay. Just elaborating. Partly strong, partly fragile. And in the days of these kings. In the days of these kings. The God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. In the days of these kings. The God of heaven will set up a kingdom. You see how closely related is the formation of the beast to the return of the Lord. So when the time comes, what will give us faith and patience to endure and to hold on is knowing this fact. The king of heaven, the God of gods, the Lord of lords is coming quickly. That is what's going to give us strength and hope to endure. Make sense? And when the God of heaven sets up his kingdom, it shall break in pieces, consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. The standing forever is in contrast to this beast standing. Who are you, you abominable thing? You shall be cast down and thrown into the lake of fire. He will be knocked off his feet, even though it's a fragile unity. The God of heaven will come, knock him over, and his kingdom shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, because that was a part of the vision, which is the kingdom of Christ, and that it broke in pieces. To smithereens, the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, the gold. The great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, its interpretation sure. So let us not meddle with the interpretation. Let's leave it as it is. We pray for the Lord to give us the understanding. In Daniel chapter 7 is also mentioned about the fourth beast there's a, a list of beasts you see in the earlier portion the great sea are stirred up the great sea is the mediterranean and there are four great beasts a lion with some details to its stature with eagle's wings there's another beast a bell <clears throat> and there's a leopard notice these same animals are mentioned in the book of revelation in chapter 13 so it's directly pointing to us to go to the book of daniel so they form i believe these 
three beasts form in the book of Revelation to um, which results in the fourth beast. The final one is the fourth one in Daniel chapter 2. It's the fourth beast which was dreadful. In Daniel 7, it's the fourth beast which is dreadful, terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge eye and teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it. It had ten horns. The difference is Islamic. I was considering the horns and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there in this horn, so there's three other leaders that are going to be taken out. It's possible that Egypt was one, Libya was one, and Syria is another. Even Lebanon. The strong players in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, need to come under the control of the Antichrist because of the prime location where they're at. The heart of Assyria, the heart of Babylon. So the little horn plucks three others out and there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and the mouth speaking pompous words. So this is where the biblical teachers, scholars have the consensus that this is the man of sin of the last days, the Antichrist that we commonly call proud, blasphemous, speaking pompous words. Immediately after this scene, I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beasts, they had the dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I think this also ties in with the Gog and Magog scenario, which is the beast empire of the Antichrist mentioned in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38. If you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 20 and verse uh, chapter 19 and 20 and 21, we know that there's another army. The dragon, after he's bound and released, goes back out to deceive those nations again. And I believe this is where they, they play that role. The dominion is taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time that they will come back under his deception again. That's just my view. I could be wrong. I'm learning and growing in this. Tell me what you think. I was watching in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man. Look at this glorious depiction, friends, of a heavenly vision of the father and the son. And notice the Antichrist spirit is against the father and the son. The unity of the father having his son. That's that that is the core definition i believe according to the scripture and first john the beast or the antichrist the liar is he who who comes against the father and the son i was watching in the night sea visions behold one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven this is our hope for the future when the persecution of the beast is here we look up friends and keep on looking up. One like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days. He came to the Ancient of Days. The Father. And they brought him near before him. Nobody fully understands the Godhead. It's such a mystery. A marvellous mystery. But it will come that. In the future, the mystery of God will be revealed and it will end because then everybody will know this wonderful mystery. 
Then to him was given dominion and glory in the kingdom that all peoples, nations, languages should serve him. His dominions and everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. His kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. Take that. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to the one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of these things. Those great beasts, which are four, are four kings which arise out of the earth, but the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom. The kingdom is concerning Israel. And remember the greater Israel vision given to Abraham. I've done a video on it. I've done several videos on the greater Israel project. It's a sarcastic title because this is ridiculous theory that floats around about the greater Israel project. Well, there is according to the Bible, not according to the state of Israel, uh, the allegation that the state of Israel is trying to envision the greater Israel project. That's false and proven false. It's so obviously false, blatantly false. However, there's coming a time that the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom. The kingdom, even the territory that was allotted to Abraham, has been under continual assault until this time comes when the Son of Man comes, friends. But Daniel, so troubled by the fourth beast, he wants to know what does it mean. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful with its teeth of iron. This fourth beast is full of violence, violence, destruction and terror. Which devoured, broke in pieces, trampled the residue with its feet and the ten horns that were on its head and the other horn which came up before which three fell namely that horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words whose appearance was greater than his fellows i was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them in the book of revelation there's so much cross referencing we can do here i'm giving the verses to you so you do your own study cross reference here Revelation chapter 12 because it's shown there that the dragon goes to make war against the saints friends this is the time of the great tribulation the great tribulation is not the wrath of God on the earth that's after the great tribulation is Satan unleashed and his terror against the saints simple let's not complicate it I was watching the same horn is making war against the saints and prevailing against them. This entity has been and is making war against the saints. And to kill and persecute, murder, burn down churches is prevailing against the saints. However, we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we know that the eternal peace is with the Lord Jesus those who have been persecuted and martyred in the Lord at the hands of the dreadful beast which devours which breaks in pieces which tramples the residue the Islamic beast until the ancient of days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the most high and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom hallelujah Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom, which shall be different, shall devour the earth, trample it and break it in pieces, perfectly describes Islamic caliphates. The ten horns are the ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom. This is the final phrase of the caliphate. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous or blasphemies against the Most High, which the book of Revelation repeats that the blasphemies that come out of this beast are atrocious he shall persecute the saints of the most high he shall intend to change the times and the law sharia law sharia finance sharia banking sharia law 
Islamic jurisprudence goes together within the caliphate. This is how they rule and organize law and order according to the Islamic principles. Huh. Friday is their designated day according to the old covenant it was sabbath the saturday friday sundown to saturday sundown but in the islamic kingdom friday is their day of rest so in islamic nations in arabia north africa islamic countries friday they close business and if you are a christian you can't go out buying stuff there's nothing available for you to buy it's a replacement theology you see Islam, and you've got to think of Islam as a system, it's not a religion, <laughs> it's not a political ideology, it's a system comprising of many facets, which is what makes it different to the other beasts, it's different to Babylon, Medo-Persia, Roman, Byzantium, different to all of them. Changes the laws and times. The saints will be given into his hand for a time in times and a half, but the court shall be seated. They shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion, the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven, shall be given to the people. You see, oh Lord, you're so great. Joint heirs with Christ, he goes. I've been doing a series on the book of Romans. If you've been missing out because all you're interested is in Bible prophecy, you need to listen to those messages. Please take time to listen to them. Remember in the book of Romans, I spoke about how the scripture says death reigned over mankind as a, a tyrant, a dictator. Very similar, the beast will reign over the people's until it's taken away, his dominion's taken away, and the people, the saints of the Most High, will receive the kingdom. Hallelujah. Let us now go to... There's so many more scriptures, friends. I think we need to go now to Revelate, uh, Daniel 11, because I want to read the ending. I believe this whole chapter is talking about the caliphates. I've done videos on this. Please check my Daniel and the Islamic Caliphate playlist. It's, it's so complicated. <laughs> but it doesn't have to co be complicated. <laughs> it's complicated for me to prove to you how I believe all of this portion in Daniel 11 is explaining the iron. Whereas the Medo-Persian, the goat and the ram... The Greece angel, the um, Persian angel was revealed to Daniel. What wasn't revealed to us was the nature of what the iron would be. The fourth beast and I believe Daniel 11 is showing us the nature of what this empire would be like. It has a lot of north and south problems friends. This is what I'm saying. Islamic history, the caliphates, it wasn't straightforward unity, no way. It started with the Arabs in the south and then it grew. Then it was divided into north and south. You see? I'm on to something with that. I believe it's right. At the time of the end, I'm reading the final portion of Daniel 11. So I want to go into Daniel chapter 12. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, horsemen, many ships and he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them and pass through. He shall also enter the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall escape from his hand, Edom, Moab and the prominent people of Ammon, which is Jordan. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. Also the Libyans and Ethiopians shall follow at his heels. But news from the east and from the north. You see, at the time of the end, 
when we think of human existence, our lifetime, and we, we think of everything so in the, in the present day, a short time span. But according to biblical history, friends, Bible prophecy covers a vast amount of time. Some of the scriptures that we read are covering the past, the present, and the future in a short nugget. Does that make sense? It's a panoramic timeline. When Islam came on the scene, that was the beginning of the system of the beast. Do you understand? So technically, in theory, I would say the beast is here. The system is here. It's been here since the advent of Muhammad. Since that guy showed up, it's arrived. It will grow. It will have conflict, a lot of infighting. It will take over territory, a lot of bloodshed in its path. I believe the time of the end began then already. It comes in phrases or phases. But news from the east and the north. At a time of the Ottoman Empire... There was conflict between the Ottomans and the Russians at the time. There was war. And that, I believe, is what resulted in the eventual end or death of the Ottoman Empire. I believe it started there. That conflict between the Turks and the Russians. There's so much I need to read about and understand. I've just given you headlines. Uh... Please look into it. And when you're listening to me saying these things, look into them. Tell me what you come up with. Leave a comment. Because there's so much information, we... <laughs> I can't be here for six hours. <laughs> but news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go out with fury, great fury, to destroy and annihilate many, because he would be challenged. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. When you look on the map, it seems like Lebanon territory, that part of the world. Between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. And yet he shall come to his end, no one will help him continuing on at that time so he hasn't finished he continues to say at that time Michael shall stand up Michael is an archangel over Israel there are fallen angels over fallen territories and there are God's holy angels over his land over his people you see the perfect order in God's administration how he organizes military forces What's the other word I can call it? I don't know. He's the Lord of hosts. The hosts are the heavenly host, the angelic. Michael is assigned to Israel, just as the prince of Persia, the prince of uh, Greece was assigned over Greece and Persia in the book of Daniel, chapter 10. Read about that whole scenario. These angelic hosts are given dominion over regions territory i believe um the late michael heiser god bless his soul talked a lot about this i'd like to go and listen to some of his more in-depth se seminars but i'm sure he spoke about this anyway everything is in order in god's administration the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people doesn't mean there'll be complete protection, but guaranteed, friends, there is spiritual warfare in the heavenlies taking place that you and I will never see in the natural. Revelation talks about the dragon fighting and there's no room for him anymore and he's thrown out. Who do you think the struggle is with? I believe it's Michael, the restrainer. A great time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. There's so much to say here. 
so much friends i did a video talking about this great trying time of trouble could also be considered the holocaust as well because think of the timeline of things friends the timeline it's not in it's so like narrow it's vast such as never was since it was a nation Israel and at that time your people shall be delivered everyone is found who is found written in the book and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt those who are wise shall shine at the brightness of the firmament and turn many to righteousness like the stars forever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And the time of the end, we've been living it, friends. It just is happening in phrases. A lot of what we're reading is not going to happen in two weeks, is it? The fulfillment of the beast is not going to be here and gone. It's happen, happening over a timeline. How long the fulfillment of these words be i did videos on this separate videos i'm going off well i'm off track now because i've got all these maps i want to show you regarding the location of the beast the time of the daily sacrifice is going to be taken away i've done videos on this please go back and check those Revelation. I need to get to Revelation, the next one, to show you what I'm talking about. Revelation chapter 17. When we talk of the beast, we've got to mention the harlot inevitably because she's the one controlling it. She created it, she's controlling it. <clears throat> if we scroll down at the bottom of this chapter, the angel is saying to John, don't marvel, I'll help you. I'll give you the understanding. The beast that you saw and is not will ascend out to the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel. His names are not written in the book of life. When they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here's the mind which has wisdom. Seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. So the woman, backtrack a little bit. This is a royal entity. Some form of royalty. Controlling the masses. So she has a dominion, yes. Royalty has dominion, a kingdom. So this woman is sitting over mountains, regions empires kingdoms her influence is over these nations peoples empires kingdoms there are also seven kings five have fallen one is and the other has not yet come and when he comes he must continue a short time now if you go and google or look this up you'll come up with all these maps bible prophecy maps showing you what they believe these empires are and majority we're all on the same page the problem lies when we get to the 6th, 7th and 8th. Here's an illustration that I found online some, some years ago and I've saved it because I think it's explaining to you what I've been trying to say. Whoever public, published this is, I don't know where that person is and not online. I don't know what's going on. But check this out. So... According to that scripture, this is taken from that verse. Revelation 17. Egypt. Like I say, consensus is that we all agree when we get to Rome. It's the problem when we get to the 7th and the 8th, or the 6th, 7th and the 8th. Egypt. One of the mountains, one of the heads. Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome. But then we kind of get a bit funny over here. It's simple. All we need to know is what was the kingdom that came after Rome. 
people don't go forward do they they just stop they pull up the handbrake and for some reason they conclude oh Rome is going to come back it's going to revive because it was wounded and it's going to come back I could say yes and no what do I mean well let's look at the regions so here's your Egyptian empire look at it I mean look at the region it covered now think of what entity, what religious, spiritual, military, political entity dominates these regions today. Egyptian, Egyptian again, another alternative map. The common denominator is Israel or Jerusalem. All these empires that would come and go and oppress the people of Israel. The Assyrian, we're moving along now. Egypt, Assyria. Is there a picture being painted now? Do you see where the harlot sits? Babylon. We're going in order of this. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon. What is a spiritual wicked, wickedness, a harlotry? That's an abomination to the Lord. Is idolatry, isn't it? Idolatry is the ultimate wickedness against the Lord of heaven. Islam is the ultimate idolatry. Medo-Persian. This is where the woman sits, according to the map where Bible scholars, teachers, students... We're all agreed on this. There are some alternative views that are completely off the charts. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Don't make no sense. Steer clear from that because that would just confuse you. Where are we at? Medo-Persia. Greece. Harlot sitting over these mountains. And then we get to the Roman Empire. Now, let's pause here for a second. When we think of Roman Empire, we think of this, the Western leg. I believe the scripture is referring to the United Roman Empire, which became East and West. The one in purple, that portion became Byzantine. It was more Christian than the Western Christian Roman Empire. They moved to Rome. And then many centuries later, the Vatican. Over here, the capital was Constantinople. And the landmark for that was the temple Hagia Sophia, which is now under Turkish control and has been Islamicized. Blasphemous. This is the difference the Roman Empire split to <clears throat> the Byzantine Empire now notice the similarities on the map people say yeah this was Rome but what dominated the two legs friends that crushed broken pieces trampled everything the residue was Islam took over. Islam took over. In order for you to understand this and prove my point, I'm going to share a video clip with you. But I'll do that first. Let me share the video clip. I mentioned this before and I've shown his video before as well. Can we zoom in a bit, a bit more? Let me see if I can zoom in a bit more. How's that? Is that a bit better? How's that? I'm going to play this now. I might have to go back to the other view. Sorry, one moment. I want to get it just right. Trying to. So, this is a professor. He's an expert in political Islam. The whole full video can be found under his channel, which is political Islam, not this channel. It's the presentation of his seminars called Why We Are Afraid. And... That sums it up. This is why I believe Bible prophecy land don't talk about Islam because they are afraid. They're intimidated. 
but we can bash the Roman Catholic Church. We can talk evils about the Jews, but we don't talk about the Islamic influence over the peoples. We don't talk about Islam. And this is because we are afraid. Fear not, little flock. Let me play this. It's five minutes. Very important information he's going to give you here. He's going to explain Bill Warner the aftermath of this division. Byzantine Empire, Arab Caliphate. So this is the beginning. You see this here? This is the beginning of Muhammad's Caliphate when Islam began and it grew. It expanded under his four caliphs. At this time, did you know, Byzantine Empire was still there. But what happened, the division happened. This is why I say Daniel 11 is talking to us about the division within Islam. The north and south, there was a conflict between the Sunni and the Shiite Muslims, caliphates. Oh, so complicated. <sighs> but it's, it's not complicated at the same time. So... Eventually, the Islamic Turks, because Islam had spread, spread all over here, all over the red, all over Turkey, would eventually come into Europe. And this is what Bill Warner does an excellent job of explaining. Make sure everything is... Oh, I don't want to press the wrong button. All right. Ready? I think it's got subtitles in case you're hard of hearing as well. Yeah. Every tick is 20. Oh, we need to go back. Right. Yeah. Every tick is 20 years. Oh, he's copying. The new okay. battles for that 20 year period come up in white. The okay, let me just give you an introduction. <laughs> he's talking the red dots and the white dots are the dots on the map. He will have a map, okay, on his screen. And he will show you where the military invasions happened. The West versus the East, the Islamic invasions. He's going to show you on the map how bad it was. And nobody talks about this. No one. Because they're afraid to talk about Islam. In case they're put in a box, pigeonholed. You Islamophobe, like people say that about me. No, I just want to be honest. I want to be straightforward and look at history for what it is and what it was before people start reinventing history or rewriting it. So Bill Vaughan is going to show us a map like this showing you the invasions, the incursions, the assault. Then they fade to red to show you the history. So white's what's happening right now. Red has happened. Let's see how these 548 battles portray, act out over we're going to watch, in 70 seconds, we're going to watch 1,200 years of conquest. Look how fast this is happening. Bam! Here comes... You see that? What is that in the red? That is the Islamic armies coming in to invade Europe. This has happened. This is in the history. But they don't teach this history to our schools. Because they fear people will become... Muslim haters, which is a risk, I know, I admit. You've got to handle and approach this with logic and reason and with love and compassion for those who are Muslims. We don't hate them. We're talking about political system, military stuff that happened, geopolitical stuff that happened in human history. But like the, uh, the book of Daniel says, this beast was different. It was religious as well. And this is why it's so difficult to talk about Islam without being censored, without being labelled Islamophobe. So this is what he's showing. Let me continue without interrupting. I'll try my best not to interrupt. Oh. Comes. You didn't know France was hammered that hard, did you? You heard of tours. Watch what's happening in Spain. In the islands. Now many of these raids or battles if they're at the coastline, are slave raids. The slaving that took place in here was extensive and went on and on. All of this work is also happening now then. We're now into the golden age of Baghdad. This is the punishment that's being handed out to Christians everywhere. In Spain, after one battle, 
there were knights' heads were cut off and they made a pile so high that a man on horseback couldn't see over them. All of the European civilization in North Africa is now gone. No. Okay. Now, pretty soon, and by the way, there will be a period of time, and you can see the clock running up here, there will be a brief blip of five battles that occur in North Africa, the Barbary Pirate Wars. We're on there. Okay? Now then, Byzantium has fallen. Now then, Eastern Europe is being hammered. What year was this? 1500 to 1520. Byzantine has fallen. Now Europe is being invaded. This is what happened. Where's your Roman Empire? The Roman Empire was defeated by the Islamic Empire. It had a big battle. This is at the time of the Crusades. You'll see him cover that in a minute. And how we keep talking about all the horrendous Crusades, how bad they were. It was a response to the Islamic invasion. I'll admit there were terrible atrocities committed. Of course, in battle that happens, you get a few bad apples. I mean, it was really bad. I'll go into that in other videos that I've done in the past. I'm not gonna repeat all that again. I'll continue. I said I wasn't gonna interrupt. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Notice that it is relentless. It doesn't stop. This is the history that you're never told about. This is the history that explains how all of this came about. Now then they're getting slower because Islam is becoming weaker. I have to. I have to say something. You see the map, how it changed. How much greener it's become now. So it was through military expansion and war that Islam had spread and through populating. Do you understand, friends? My darling friends, you know how hard this is for me to talk to you about this stuff, knowing my family are Muslim. My brother's upset with my videos. It's hard for them to hear me talk about this. It's so hard. But I've got to be truthful. I've got to be honest praying that the Lord will reveal to them the truth to not be afraid but we need to face history face the facts this is what happened it's about time they start teaching this in schools which is never going to happen corruption all, all, all empires collapse from the inside, ultimately. Okay. I say that what caused the collapse of classical civilization was not the invading German barbarian tribes. I say that classical civilization was destroyed by Islam. Now comes the question. Why do we not want to know that? We're going to answer that question. All right, now I want to give you the headlines. With all those little dots, basically what I've showed you is just quantity, okay? Relentless, but quantity. Now I'm going to give, we, we gave you 1,200 years of battles in like 70 seconds. Now we're going to go through in about four minutes. I'm going to give you the headlines from each century so you will know the emotional tone of what is happening. All right, seventh century. Muhammad sent Khalid out, the sword of Allah, to the Jazima tribe to offer Islam. They refused. He annihilated every one of them. At the Battle of Oasis in Iraq, for two days he spent out rounding up the losers, put them in a dry stream bed, and cut off heads until the stream ran with blood. He then took the captain of the Zoroastrian Persian tribe. His wife was there. He cut off the man's head, let the blood drain into the soil, and raped his wife in the bloody soil. That was one of the companions of Muhammad. This is the nature of jihad. Where did Khalid learn how to do that? From Muhammad. From Muhammad at the Battle of Khaibar. 
Umar conquered Jerusalem, and every Jew and every Christian became a demi, which is a third-class semi -slave. And in some of these protests, sometimes you will hear Muslims in Arabic saying um, something like Khaybar, Khaybar, O Yehud, that that battle that happened in history, it will happen again. Because in Islamic prophecies, oh, you see, just like everything fits without me trying to make it fit. In Islamic end times, they have prophecies that tell them what will happen. One of the significant events is that Jews will be hiding behind rocks for their for their dear lives and the Muslims are going to expose them to kill them. Yeah, part of the end times. Slave. You're now going to see, for the next few centuries, you're going to see Golden Age. We're told this myth of the Golden Age, how wonderful Islam is. So here's what's happening during the Golden Age. They started attacking Sindh, which is the Hindus. 26,000 Hindus died. Armenian nobles were herded into a church after a debate and the building burned down on top of them. At Ephesus, 7,000 Greeks are enslaved. We're still having the Golden Age. All new churches were ordered destroyed. At Amorium, there was massive enslavement of all the Christians. The Egyptian Christians revolt over the Jizya, which is the demi tax under the Sharia. Churches are burned, vineyards destroyed. 10th century, we're still in the Golden Age. In Thessalonica, 22,000 Christians enslaved. Christians massacred in Seville, in Egypt and Syria, 30,000 churches destroyed. And this is what the book of Daniel is describing to us, perfect pinpoint precision. Trampled, um, terrible, dreadful empire that trampled the residue and its feet. That's the end of that video. very upsetting stuff I know but you have to watch the full make sure to do that this weekend in fact do it tonight why we are afraid a 1400 year secret by Dr. Will Bill Warner political Islam is his channel now so that is what happened but we wanna we're hung up on the Roman Empire I don't know what to do about that friends I don't honestly I don't know it's very frustrating for me so the the face of the map changed completely it changed right totally changed does this now make sense when we say why is turkey wanting to revive the ottoman empire uh because let's read in fact we read this uh, revelation 17 five fallen one is the other has not yet come and when he comes he must continue a short time the beast that was not that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who receive no kingdom as yet but they'll receive authority for one hour as the kings of the beast that's all they're going to be good for they're going to be used, manipulated by the beast for the last hour, friends. And in that last moment of their power and glory that they've been given, they're going to use it to fight Jesus. These are of one mind. And the one mind is giving me insight to understand this is referencing Islam that unifies them spiritually. Which is mind control, indoctrination. The stronghold of, of Islam is so terrible, so dark. It's a miracle when the Lord delivers people from it, from its grip. And they will give their power and authority to the beast. These, who's these? The ten horns, the ten kings. These will make war with the Lamb. This is where it's going, friends. Their ultimate goal is to declare war against the Lord of Lords. I've given you a lot today. I might end the video. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. But the harlot, you see, 
The waters where you, which you saw where the harlots sit saw peoples, multitudes, nations and tongues. Then the ten horns which you saw and the beast, these will hate the harlot which is in Saudi Arabia. Make her desolate, naked. Eat her flesh, burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And that woman you saw is a great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Where she sits are peoples, multitudes, nations and tongues. Peoples, multitudes, nations and tongues. Not the United Nations. Peoples, multitudes, nations and tongues. Are these not peoples, multitudes, nations and tongues? How many languages we covering here? That, my darling friends, is what Nebuchadnezzar saw in the vision. The Lord gave him such a profound vision and Daniel, prophet of God, gave the interpretation and it is applicable to our time today. And we are here at the feet. We're waiting to see who these ten kings are. But we know what region they're coming out from. So we don't need to look at the UN. We don't need to look at the US, the UK, Germany, Britain, France, the EU, all this. No, just please, please stop. Help me in this challenge, in my calling. Will you help me? Will you help me by sharing these videos that I do? Share them with people. Don't only share them. Talk about it, write about it, make social media posts about it, reason with our fellow believers who are really wanting to know the truth and reason with them. Come on the battlefield with me, friends. It's a battlefield out here. It's hard. Would you do that? Will you help me? I pray you will. I, I pray you will consider it. Come and join me, friends. Meanwhile, let's see what becomes of this situation. Saudi Arabia, normalization with Israel. The harlot seeking to entice the nations. How far can her influence go? This is how far. And it's further than this. But where the beast is, is in the Middle East, North Africa, Central Asia. Her influence, her, I'm talking about, the Hala, Arabia, her influence stretches over the West. One of the biggest US lobbies, are, I mean, we all, we only hear about Israel lobby, right? Have you heard of the Saudi Arabian lobby, the Arab lobby? You want to look into that and be amazed with what you find. I'm going to end the video now. Praise the Lord. I'm now going to publish it for today, which is Saturday, the 12th of August. Remember what I said, help me out, friends. I love you. The Lord Jesus be with you always. 